before we get started, I just wanted to, um, you to note that on Digital Arts 116, um, if we go to the photo Photoshop uh, unit, the link page, if we scroll down, we can see um, we have the montage exercise one, two, and three. These handouts, um, these are also located in the photography binders for you to follow through um, step by step everything that I'm uh, going to say. Um, the other thing we need to do is find our resources for this exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the digital server uh, right here and I'm going to go to the folder that's called photo and there should be one called Photoshop montage. I'm going to click and drag that to my desktop. It's going to take a second to go on my desktop and then I'm going to right click and rename this um, right before the name, I'm going to put my first and last name. So while I'm working on my not montage, nobody's playing around with my images. Okay, um, so I'm going to go. To, I'm going to launch Photoshop, um, and this is just a little note that when you're working in Photoshop, it's much easier to file open um, each of the images all together instead of going to that folder and opening one one by one. So I'm going to go to my folder, double click. And I'm going to select it all, and then I'm going to hit open, and that's going to open all of these uh, individual images together on one page. So I'm going to hit open, and there they all are. If I come up here, we can see that there's a tab for each one of the images um, that I need to put into my montage. So I'm going to start off with the picture that's called Dunes, um, and this is going to be my backdrop for my montage. I want to change the resolution of this image. So I'm going to go to image, image size, and because I got this off the internet, this is a lower resolution image. It's actually only 72 dpi, so this is appropriate for digital, um, for web, but if I wanted to print this high quality, it's not going to be. So I can change it here right now to 300, and you can see that it's going to create more pixels. We can see that this is now increased here, let me go back to when we had 72, look at there's not as many pixels. Um, it's going to create more pixels, but it's going to be still fuzzy. It's not going to be crisp because all it's doing is it's copying um, pixels next to each other and like making up um, these pixels that it's going to be by, by. So yes, you can change the resolution, but you can't, you can't make more quality. Um, so I always actually recommend trying to find a background image that you take yourself or you find one on like pexels.com that has the high resolution that's uh, at least 300 dpi. I just wanted to show that to you. So I'm gonna hit okay. And it's gonna increase. I'm gonna hit command zero to make everything fit on my page. So the next thing I wanna do is, I think that this background back here is pretty boring. So I'm gonna take the quick selection tool and I'm going to uh, make sure that I'm in the brush mode. I can brush, I could add to my selection, I could, could subtract from my, um, selection. So I'm going to pick this first one and I'm going to click and drag over the sky and notice that it knew that I wanted to um, select all this. I'm then going to go to my sky tab and hit command A. That's going to select all. Notice that we have the marching ants around the whole thing. The whole thing selected. Command C copies and then I'm going to go back to my dunes layer and I want to paste into my selection. So I'm going to go edit, paste special, and I want to paste into my selection. Okay, I don't want to just copy and paste, otherwise it's just going to put a big square, you know, and I want it to fit into this, this space. So I'm going to hit paste into. Now look at it, it looks really small. So I'm going to use the shortcut Command T, which is for transforming. So if I hit Command T right now, notice I have this bounding box. I'm going to hold down Shift and pull from the corner and I'm still holding down shift while I pull from the other corner. And notice that it's only going to place that, because I said paste into, I did that special paste. Uh, the sky's only going to paste into uh, that selected area. When I'm done, I could either hit the check mark or I can hit enter return. Um, and I just wanted to show you over in your last, your um, layers, that it automatically created a mass when I made that selection. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring over um, some jellyfish. So I'm going to go over to um, this tab. We're done with sky, so I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to go to the jellyfish, and I'm going to select. And in some cases, it's easier 
to make a selection by selecting the background and then doing what's called an inverse. So that's what I'm going to do here. You might have to check your, your tolerance here. I'm going to leave mine at 5 for right now, but I might need to change it. Um, with the magic wand, I'm selecting the background. And notice that it didn't select very much because my tolerance is very low. So I'm going to change it to 20 and try again. I'm going to click and notice that it's picking up much more. I'm going to try um, 25 one more time. It's almost like too specific. So I'm going to go back down to 15. And I'm going to try 15. Oh, two. Um, specific. So, yeah, that's not doing what I want it to do. 15. And let's try 25. There we go. Um, so 25 is good for me. Um, so I want to only select the uh, jellyfish though. So I'm going to select inverse. And now only the, the jellyfish is selected. Notice that this little part right here is still selected. So I'm actually going to take the um, quick selection tool and put it on negative. I'm going to say I don't want to select that. So now the jellyfish is um, the only thing selected. I'm not ready to copy and paste yet, though. I'm actually going to modify my selection. So if I go up to select and modify, it says that I can do all these things to what I have selected. The first thing I want to do is contract just like a little bit. So that means that it's going to grab in just a little bit more. I'm going to set it to contract by just one pixel. And what that's going to do is it's just going to hug in the selection just by one pixel. So I'm going to hit OK. And notice that the selection moved in by one pixel. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feather my selection so that the edges are really wispy. Again, I'm going to um, change it to one. That's fine. And now the edges of the selection are going to be wispy. All right, so now I'm ready to copy Command C. I'm going to go back to my do dunes and I'm going to hit Command V. At this time, I have not saved my file nor have I changed the name. So what I'm going to do is say File Save As, and I'm going to say my first name, last name. And this is montage one, and then the date. So, and I want to make sure the format is a Photoshop file, which means that the next time I open this up, that I can actually play around with the layers. If you leave it as, as JPEG, then you won't be able to manipulate the layers. So make sure that you always save that Photoshop version that you can reopen. And then hit save, and okay. The other thing I want to do is right now I'm, it's saying that I'm working in RGB mode and I'm going to actually be printing this. So I'm actually going to hit CMYK color and I'm going to say don't flatten and say OK. Um, what this does is it converts it into colors that will print on our printer. So in our, if we look inside our printer, we'll see that there's um, cyan, a blue, uh, magenta, that pink, yellow, and black. And it converts all those colors so that I can actually print it instead of just leaving it on the screen. Okay, so now let's check my layers. Um, we have the background. I'm going to double click to um, unlock it and call this one Dunes. I'm going to select the second layer and call it Sky. And I'm going to name my jellyfish. So um, I'm going to name my jellyfish <laughs> Sally. Um, and then I want to make duplicates of my jellyfish layer. So the uh, shortcut for this is command J. I know it's not D, right? Like you would think command D. Command D is actually unselect. So Sally copy. So I'm going to call this Sally 2. Or we can name them all different names. It's up to you. So command J again. I'm going to call this one Bob. Um, command J again. And I'm going to call this one Jorge. Um, and I want to make a couple more. Command J. Rita and Command J Ermine. There we go. All right, so now I have all of these, but we can't see them because they're all on top of each other. So I'm going to pick Ermine and I'm going to put him over here on the left and I'm going to change his size. So Command T, we see the bounding box, and then I'm going to hold down Shift while I'm, if I don't hold down Shift, just notice that it will let me squish it. And I don't want to ever squish it. So Command Z. And um, then I can also hover over the edge and click and drag to rotate it. And then I'm going to hit Enter or I'm going to hit this little check mark up here to freeze it. 
I'm then going to pick Rita. And again, I'm going to hit Command T to transform the size. I'm actually going to click and drag um, and flip it right here. And maybe make it a little bit smaller, actually. And then hit um, Enter Return. I'm going to pick uh, George here and um, Command T. And I'm going to make it slightly smaller. And again, I'm going to rotate it so it looks different than the other ones. Uh, enter when you have it the way you want it. Bob, Command T. I'm going to flip this one too. And make it smaller. And rotate it a little bit more. Return. Pick Sally too. Command T. Rotate it a little bit. And then for Sally, I'm going to move that. Command T. So notice that I'm selecting. and then hit return when you want it the way, when you got it the way that you want to. Okay, um, the next thing I'm going to bring in is a flower. Sally right there. Um, so I'm done with the jellyfish. I'm going to close that and I'm going to go to the flower. Oh, and at this time I'm actually going to hit, notice I have this little asterisk right here. That means that um, I haven't saved in a while. So I'm going to hit Command S and that is saving what I've done so far. Um, and then now I'm going to go to the flower. All right, so I want to select this flower. Um, you could use the magnetic lasso tool. That's one way that you could do it. So what I could do is click on the edge of the flower, and I'm, I'm not clicking again. I'm just hovering over the flower edge, and you have to go really, really slow while you do this. Um, now, if you screw up, you go too fast, and, and you can do that. You can just click. Um, and then go back to the first one and then hit Command D, which unselects. Um, the other tool you could use is the Quick Selection tool, which I'm going to start off with. Um, and notice I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm hitting the left um, bracket to um, change the size of the brush. And I'm just clicking and it's, no it's noting um, the differences in pixels. So it actually can kind of detect it. Notice that it didn't do a really, really good job right here. So I'm going to say that I want to unselect this. I'm going to make my brush size smaller and try to fix that and that. And now I got to add a little bit more because again, I went too far. All right. So it's looking okay to me. Um, so before I bring it over though, I want to modify my selection. So I'm going to go to select modify. And again, I'm going to contract by one pixel. And this time I'm going to um, smooth my selection. So I'm going to do that by like three pixels and say, okay. Okay, now I notice that it pulled in at the edges here. Um, and then, because I was had a little bit of green there. And now I can hit Command C to copy. I'm going to go back to my montage tab, hit Command V to paste. And it's really tiny. So what I want to do is Command T to bring up my transform box, my bounding box. I'm holding down shift while I pull the edges and then I'm going to hit return. All right. Um, and right here, I'm going to make sure that I label my flower layer. And um, this is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to add the last thing for this exercise. I'm going to go to window, the window tab, and I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool to select this window. So I'm going to click and every time I click it's going to create an anchor point. So I'm going to click on the inside and outside corners of this window. And we see that this line is following along every time I click the inside and outside of the corner. And I'm going to go back to that very first point that I made. Notice that this the genesis point shows up, that little circle. When I click and I see that it's going to make that selection, um, that those lines uh, into a selection. So this one I don't have to modify at all. I think it looks really good. So I'm going to hit Command C to copy, go back to my montage, and Command V to paste. Again, notice that um, I need to move it with the move tool, and it's still kind of small. So Command T, I'm going to hold down Shift while I'm pulling from the outer corners, 
until I got it the size that I want to, and then hit return. All right, this is the end of the first portion. So what I want you to do is file save. Once again, make sure that it's a .psd. Um, if you haven't done it before, you should have said file save as. Make sure that it was a Photoshop format. Um, you should have named it with your first and last name. Um, and again, I'm going to hit save and replace and say okay. All right.